Bonjour. So when I was in school and in chemistry, the teacher showed us benzene. And I immediately wanted to make it myself because it looks so cool. Wow. So I searched on YouTube how to make benzene. And every tutorial used a chemical called sodium benzoate, which I didn't have, of course. So in this video, I'm going to show you how benzene can be made from plastic bottles in only a few steps. I'm also going to use easy to find chemicals that you can find at your local hardware store and at the end of the video I'm going to try the benzoate method too to compare them and finally answer which method is the best. Just a reminder that if you try to recreate anything you see on this channel it is at your own risk and I am not responsible. Anyway, let's get started. The first step is to get some PET plastic, but since there are many different types of plastics it's hard to recognize which is which. So if you take a look at this kind of chart you can see that the PET, the plastic we want, is labeled with the number 1 in the weird triangle, just like on this bottle. If you can't find the label, don't worry, because almost all plastic bottles of this type are made out of PET. This way you can probably take some random bottles and be fine. So now that I had collected some bottles, I needed to cut them in tiny pieces to make the first reaction faster and easier. I first wanted to grind them with my big mixer, but it seems like it's broken. <laughs> so I had to cut everything using scissors, and it took a long time. When we have a PT gravel, we can pour it all inside a reaction can, and I made this one myself, but you can use a paint can as well. The next reaction we need is ethylene glycol. Most of the time it is sold as an anti-freeze for cars and it's almost pure with only some blue dye. But I've only found this bottle which contains ethylene glycol, water, alcohol and a yellow dye as well, so I had to concentrate it. Thankfully ethylene glycol has a very high boiling point of 197 degrees, which means I can boil off the water and alcohol to be left with mostly ethylene glycol. So I set up the hot plate with the beaker and start to heat. To speed up the boiling, I tried to use this powerful fan, but it was too powerful and it cooled down the beaker too much. I'm thinking maybe I'll make a fume hood one day with this fan. I also did a second batch in this can to make sure we'll have enough ethylene glycol. And to measure how much I made, I first weighted the empty bottle and then the full one. And it seems like we have 221 grams, that's a pretty good amount. For our second reagent, we need some sodium hydroxide, and add a large excess because we will need it later. As you can see, mine is very dirty and looks yellow, but why waste pure reagents when the whole reaction will look yellow anyway, right? If we can't avoid yellow, we must go full yellow mode, right? After adding all of the ethylene glycol, I tried mixing it for a very long time as well, but it never fully dissolved, so I decided to just pour it in, as it will probably dissolve when heating. Normally, we should do a reflux setup to heat the mixture a maximum, but since I don't have a water pump, I just made a distillation setup, because anyway, my hot plate will not boil all of the ethylene glycol, since it's not powerful enough. So regardless, we keep the reflux for multiple hours, and while this is going, let me explain what is happening in the reaction. Here is a piece of the PET polymer, and as you can see, it's made out of terephthalate diesters with acylene units. And in this reaction, we will break the ester bonds. At first, our sodium hydroxide attacks on the carbon of the ester, which adds a hydroxide group on it, and forms the intermediate. Then the glycolate group is being eliminated, and keeps the negative charge. This forms the terephthalic acid and sodium glycolate. Then the terephthalic acid is deprotonated by the glycolate to form sodium terephthalate and ethylene glycol. So ethylene glycol is both a solvent and a product for this reaction. Sorry for the shitty animation, but it's my first try, so let me know in the comments if you want more. 
Now that we have our sodium terephthalate, we have two choices for the rest of the procedure. The first one is to dissolve the terephthalate in water and precipitate the terephthalic acid by adding any strong acid like hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. This is great if you want some pure terephthalic acid and it might lead to a better yield if used to make benzene. The second choice that I have selected is to directly boil most of the ethylene glycol and use the crude mixture directly for the next reaction. If you remember, I said that I added an excess of sodium hydroxide and this comes useful now. Let me explain. The reaction we want to do is known as the decarboxylation. It's very easy. We have a molecule such as terephthalic acid and we just want to remove those CO2 groups to make benzene. And that can be done by adding a base such as sodium hydroxide and heating strongly. The base will sort of catch the CO2 by making sodium carbonate and will facilitate the whole reaction. Keep in mind that this is a simplification. So now, if we just heat our crude reaction mixture, we should start to form some benzene that can be recovered by distillation. So that's what I did, but I think I heated too much at some point and fumes were liberated. At this point, I just halted my breath and got outside. We don't want to inhale benzene fumes because it's a carcinogen. Anyway, after the reaction finished, I dried the crude benzene with some calcium chloride and stored it for later, since I want to make more benzene by another method before purifying everything at once. Now let's do the second method. I start this time with benzoic acid, but to make the benzene, I will need to transform it into sodium benzoate. I have put some in the beaker already, but there is some left in this plastic packaging. So I've washed up the plastic with some water to get all of the benzoic in a beaker. It's not soluble though, so it will stay as a suspension. My honey, this is honey in French, my honey bottle of some carbonate. I've put the beaker on the hot plate and start heating lightly. This will help for a reaction. To make the sodium benzoate, you can add either sodium hydroxide, carbonate or bicarbonate. And I use some sodium carbonate since I have more and it's cheaper. The reaction produces sodium benzoate and some CO2 gas. Yeah. Oh, there's a nice visual effect. Let's take a look. The bubbles are carrying the benzoic acid. <laughs> it's very funny. Usually it was sunk on the bottom, but now it's on the top. Very cool looking. Very nice. So yeah, we need to add it progressively so we don't make too much too much foam because you know I I hate foam. Foam is bad. We heated the solution because sodium carbonate is slow to dissolve and to react in cold water. As more and more carbonate is added, you can see that the solid benzoic acid disappears slowly. And when it's all gone, we know we have added enough sodium carbonate. You can also test the pH of the solution. If you add too much sodium carbonate, it will turn basic. And if you added just enough, it should not change color. Now to recover our sodium benzoate, we just need to boil off all of the water by heating more. Why the hell is there a dog in my lab? What you doing here, mate? Yo, get out! Get, get, get the fuck out! You dumb as shit! What? <laughs> what the fuck was this, man? What the dog doing? Don't come into the lab, bro! <laughs> what you doing, mate? Okay, so here we have finally boiled down all of the water, so this is our sodium benzoate. It's in quite big chunks, but hey, anyway. When we have our dry sodium benzoate, we add sodium hydroxide as the second reagent. The reaction should be easier to do because there's only one CO2 group to liberate for each benzoate molecule instead of two for the terephthalate. Anyway, the best ratio is to add 10 grams of benzoate for 6 grams of sodium hydroxide. And again, use a metal reaction vessel because if you don't, the sodium hydroxide will start to dissolve glass when melted. After crushing the two powders together, I load up the can with this funnel. And then I attach the rest of the setup with a thermometer and a good induction hot plate. So uh, I don't remember how this thing works, maybe... Okay. No, maybe... Okay, then... Alright, and here we can just change the power. As you can see, the decarboxylation produced again a lot of fumes that we don't want to breathe. Thankfully, they rise to the top and escape outside but I still try to be as far away as possible. Anyway, the distillate is made of two layers. One on top is the crude benzene oil contaminated with orange impurities and at the bottom is just some residual water. The fraction that we collected ranged from 69 to 82 degrees Celsius because 69 is the azeotrope of benzene and water and 82 degrees is the boiling pot of just benzene. 
I had to hit extremely strongly to get everything to react, because the hit is not so well conducted in the middle of the reaction mix. In the end, I recovered around 50 ml of cooled benzene oil. So I discarded the water layer and combined the benzene with the other one made from the tear phthalate and put everything in a flask. And again, we collected the distillate from 69 to 82 degrees, and it looked a little bit cloudy at first, which means there is some water in it as well, but we'll remove it later. I had to attach the condenser with some iron rope, because my clamp doesn't want to close correctly anymore. One day, I'll try to make my own stands as well. Okay, so the temperature is getting higher and higher, and right now, let's change the, the flask, because this is probably not much more benzene in here. And I don't, don't want to collect shit. Yeah, you can see the rate has much, much slowed down. So, here. And yeah, yeah, the temperature is going way up. And now it's gonna be just water and, and all the crap distilling. So we can just stop here. All right. Because if you boil too much, this this is gonna you know, make the tar look bad, you know. It's gonna be a, a real mess to clean. So we've got our yield right here. And this is approximately how much we expected. So the yield is actually pretty good, because we've got to remember that we had some impurities in the 15 ml of the benz weight, and some benzene has probably been lost during the distillation as well. But we still got an additional 5 ml at least that came from the tear phthalate method. And what I think will improve if we have to redo this procedure, is that I would put a real reflux setup for the hydrolysis of the PET, and I might try to purify it better before continuing. Anyway, don't leave yet, because I'm gonna show you how to clean the flask as well. I then put some calcium chloride into the cloudy benzene and stir it to absorb the water. Then I have this cute brown bottle that I have labeled and put all of the dry benzene inside it. Okay, now that I've finished everything, I've disassembled the apparatus, now we just need to clean. <laughs> this is the worst part. Most of the time I don't show it, I think I've never showed cleaning. But, yeah, anyway. So here we have some organic tar, you know? <laughs> Mostly, I, I guess. So, my guess is that if we use some alcohol, it's probably gonna dissolve, and we're gonna be able to clean it this way. Otherwise, you know, you have Pirona solution, but I don't wanna waste, I don't wanna waste my sulfuric. Okay boys, so I just cleaned with a little bit of water, uh, a rinse with some sodium hydroxide, and that's it. So now the flask is, I mean, it's not new at all. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of bad looking, but it's, it's as good uh, as it was when I used it, I guess. Anyway, that was Jump Chemist. See you in the Discord, and see you next time. <laughs>